Yeah, it's filming. <laughs> Cut this out. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hello. Now you join us in the vegetable garden. And this week we'll be looking at the potatoes that we planted earlier on in the season. Now if you remember, back in April, we planted some Maris Piper potatoes. <laughs> we planted some Maris Pipers, didn't we? In the uh, in the bag from a very famous Scandinavian flat pack furniture provider, IKEA. The IKEA bag is here. We've had the potatoes in since April. As you can see now, the plants are dying away. These ones are well and truly withered. The other ones are in the process of dying away. And so what I'm going to do now, because we've had a couple of days of dryish weather, I'm going to harvest the potatoes and see what we've got. Now, keep in mind that we've already done two little sort of secret harvests. I've gone in and I've rooted around and pulled out some potatoes already. And we've had one and a half kilos of potatoes already, which we've eaten with relish. Actually, we ate them with butter. <coughs> we could have eaten them with relish or with gusto. So today we're going to we're going to dig up the remainder and see what else we got in our bumper crop of IKEA bag. <laughs> See, this is the IKEA bag, and that's all that contains the potatoes. So what we got was six seed potatoes, Maris Pipers, and we planted those with some all-purpose compost and a bit of fertilizer, special potato fertilizer, to, uh, to help them grow. Now you can see in here where I've already dug up some potatoes. You can see that bit of a gap there. But what I've also done is I've piled up some of the earth, because remember, we've got to keep the potatoes underground, under the earth the whole time while we're while we're uh, digging them up. Otherwise they're gonna turn green. Green potatoes are poisonous. You can't eat them. You can't eat green potatoes. I keep telling you. They go green, they're poisonous, you've got to throw them away. All right? Anyway, let's have a look. So, Have a dig in and we'll have a look at what potatoes we've got. There's one, first of all. It's tiny. Not over the moon with that one, but, uh, but let's have a look. Now, when I was young, back in Hertfordshire, we grew potatoes in our garden for a couple of years and then we stopped growing potatoes. One year, I didn't plant any, but later on that season, those potatoes come up, they're huge potato plants, and we've got more and more potatoes. Because what happens is, as you dig these up, you're going to miss a couple of potatoes. There's going to be tiny little ones in there somewhere that you're not even going to notice. And they're going to seed and germinate and they're going to grow again next year. So, if you are doing this in the ground, you don't have to worry too much about clearing all the earth out. So, I'm just checking again in the area that we did the original potatoes. I haven't found any yet, apart from those tiny little ones. But now I'm going to start burrowing in underneath the plants themselves and we'll see what we've got. Oh, let's see one. Again, very small, not too happy with that one. Still, it tastes fine. We go in a bit more. Oh, that's more like it. There's potato. I'll put that down there. Ah, there's a... more potatoes. Put those down there. So what I'm going to do at the end of this, I'm going to weigh them, see how many potatoes we've got. Now, think about the investment of this. The bags in IKEA uh, cost, I don't know how much they cost. Euro what? 
79 cents, I'm being told by my beautiful assistant. 79 cents for a, an Ikea bag. Um, the compost, you can buy a bag of compost at the moment in Lidl for 149. Huge uh, sack of compost. Um, one, two of those maybe max for, for, for this amount. And then the seed potatoes that I got, I got them in deals, uh, which cost me one euro fifty. So my total outlay, was, let me see, was one, two, three, four, five, a couple of quid. And, <laughs> uh, and I ended up with, with all this. As I say, we've already had two meals of potatoes, one and a half kilos of potatoes, for a very small investment. And now we're going to see what else we've got from, from really doing nothing. Once I planted these, all I had to do was make sure that the earth was always over the bases of these plants. So as it grows and the, the earth starts to spread away, I just piled it back up again, just to make sure they were always under, under the ground. As I say, green potatoes are poison. And then the only other thing I did was water them every now and then. And we have a butt, we have a big butt, a water butt, which is full of rainwater, so that costs us nothing either. Um, there's another small potato. Not too happy with that. So, job hilarious. Because, because we haven't rehearsed this, it'll be hilarious if at the end of this we end up with like six potatoes. I'd be like, ah, oh, that didn't really work. There's a tiny one. Not too happy with that. Ah, oh, dear. So, under that plant, not as many potatoes as I would have liked, but now I can see some more there. So we're going to keep going. Again, every now and then you see these tiny, tiny ones, but they're not really worth worrying about. So now, and there's one. There's a good one. That's mine. <laughs> That's mine, Shishi. Well, we'll see. That's my one. <laughs> Those two. A few more. Now then. Digging down in here, there's another one. So, for the same money I could have gone to Aldi and bought a pack of potatoes, but it's not as much fun. And they don't taste as fresh. I don't know if it's all psychological, but when you dig a potato out of the ground and then cook it and eat it, there's something unbelievably fresh tasting about it. It's probably all in my head, but it's still a lovely little project to do. So simple. Every morning, I'd get up and I'd look out the back door into the garden and just have a look over at my potatoes and see how they're doing. Almost like pets. Now, we've got a few more under here now. There's a nice one. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull up this plant here. Bye, plant. Oh, thanks for the memories. <laughs> Another one. Another one. A few more. Yeah, I'm quite happy with this. Another one. I think if I was doing it again, and I am planning to do more this year. First of all, I don't think I'm going to do it in in an IKEA bag next time, which was an experiment and I thought worked pretty well. Next time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a patch in the ground and section it off, and then just plant potatoes in there and, uh, and see how that goes, and make a bigger crop. And part of the good thing about it container gardening, which is what we can think of when we do growing in a bag, is it's very self-contained. We can protect it from pests a little easier, so there's no slugs and things like that, because we can watch them going up the sides of the bags and turn over the sides so they can't crawl in, and that sort of thing. But also, and I hadn't thought of this when I started, but I was able to move the bag from one side of the garden to the other when I noticed that it wasn't getting enough light certain mornings. As the seasons change, the light changes. 
You want to make sure that your potatoes are in good light. Because remember, plants will only grow if there's lots of light going on. Now, I'm not finding many others. I thought there would be more. But maybe I've got to the end of it now. So, I'm just going to check all this. Now, this compost, I can probably use a lot of it again. Top it up with some fertiliser. Mix it with topsoil. And, uh, and use it for growing again next year. Of course, there's these tiny potatoes in there that will probably grow anyway without me having to do anything. So that'd be a nice, uh, a nice investment. That's not a potato. Okay, so I think I've got everything. I'm going to run through this myself, just with a with a sieve and make sure there's nothing else in there. And then we'll come back the second part of the video and we'll weigh them and we'll see how many potatoes we've got. Okay. Bye, babe. And uh, yeah, we've dug up the potatoes and now we're going to weigh them and see how much we got. So, as I said before, we got one and a half kilos already. We got 800 grams and then we got 700 grams the second time. I stuck my fist in and, and stole some. So now we're going to see how many we get today. So let's have a look. That's 246. Yes. Now some of these tiny ones, they don't look like you can eat them, but you can. You can boil them and put them in a salad. So, we've got a little over one and a half kilos there as well. So in total we've got three kilos of potatoes, which, uh, which I'm quite happy with. Yeah, I think that's good. So, this evening we're going to have potatoes with some chicken pie. Chicken pie, I think. So, looking forward to that. Um, and that's it. Oh, one more thing I'll tell you. Some of them you can see that there's these cracks on the skin. Okay, cracks on the skin. A little bit dappled there. And that, as far as I can tell, is because the... I don't know why, actually. But the one thing I read was that it might be because they were dry for a while and then water, watered and then they were dry again and so the, the surface just got a bit cracked. When you peel them, you can get rid of those cracks and it doesn't affect the flavour at all. Um, and uh, so, But it, it's probably advisable to keep them watered, never overwater, never saturate the potatoes as they grow, but keep make sure that they're always in a moist bit of uh, bit of soil. Okay, so one and a half kilos. Happy with that. Uh, yeah. Bye bye. Now next week we're. Oh no. no. <laughs> bye -bye.